Ladies and gentlemen, we have our 47th U.S. President, Donald J. Trump. A fascist who's Hitler, Stalin, and Mussolini all at once. So why did this fascist win by a landslide? Welcome to American Covered, I'm Chris Chappell. I'm sorry to announce that Donald Trump has won re-election. I'm so disappointed in you, America, that you didn't vote for America Uncovered's officially endorsed candidate, Chris Christie. Trump won by almost 72 million votes to zero. I mean, I knew it wouldn't be a slim victory because nothing to do with Chris Christie is slim, but come on, not a single vote. And if you're asking, well, Chris, why didn't you vote for him? Well, I mean, it's that felony conviction I got back when I was, well, you know what, never mind. The question is, how did Donald Trump win? Trump not only won more electoral votes, he got more popular votes as well. This makes Trump the first Republican in two decades to beat Democrats in the popular vote. The last time was John Kerry in 2004. Do you know how sad it is to be less cool than John Kerry? Kamala Harris may never recover from that. Republicans under Trump didn't just win the US presidential race, no, no. They won control over the Senate. And as of this recording, they have a good shot at the House of Representatives as well. This is the biggest red wave I've seen since the elevator scene in The Shining. Bet you Democrats are really happy now they didn't end Senate filibusters or add more Supreme Court justices now that we're going to be under Trump. I did warn them about that. This is all to say Kamala Harris and other Democratic candidates in general did much, much worse than most people expected. A perfect example of this is Starr County in South Texas. Trump won there and that was pretty unexpected. Why? Well, it has a 96% Latino population and hasn't voted Republican in 132 years, until now. You heard me right, Trump broke a 132 year streak in a Democratic stronghold. This would be like Optimus Prime being elected to lead the Decepticons. Even within Minnesota, a supposed Democratic stronghold where Harris's VP nominee Tim Waltz is from, Trump managed to flip four counties into Republican territory. As a matter of fact, Harris underperformed so badly, she even shocked CNN Live. So you asked, are there any places that the vice president is overperforming Joe Biden in 2020? So we could show you that as well. We just bring that out here. Harris overperforming 2020. Holy smokes. There you go. Uh, so let this go away and see if there's anything on the east side there. Uh, Literally nothing? Literally nothing. Literally not one county? She was outperformed by the guy who performed so bad he got replaced. This flies completely in the face of people who thought the 2024 election would be extremely close. The polls got it wrong, just like they did back in 2016, when they predicted Hillary Clinton would win by a landslide. Remember, Biden received 81 million votes in the election. In contrast, Harris received 14 million fewer votes than that. Huh, I wonder where all those voters disappeared to. It turns out many of the key Democrat-leaning demographics did not heed Harris's call to vote. Compared to Hillary Clinton and Biden, Harris lost a good part of the youth population. I guess she wasn't brat enough? Part of that could be explained by dissatisfaction with how the Biden administration handled conflict in the Middle East. It's actually a little surprising to see that Harris even lost female voters, despite all her efforts to appeal to them with issues such as abortion. Strangely enough, Harris performed much worse than Biden among voters who said they thought abortion should be legal in most cases. Which means abortion wasn't the deciding factor for as many people as Harris would have hoped. Probably shouldn't have put all those ovarian eggs in one basket. Harris also lost a lot of black and Latino votes compared to previous elections, making her voter base even less racially diverse than Biden's. This chart shows how most demographics, especially blacks, Asians, and Latinos, have shifted towards the right compared to four years ago. The only demographics that shifted left are people over 65 and white college-educated women. So obviously, this is a time for some deep introspection in the rank and file of the Democratic Party. Or you know, you could just blame racism and misogyny. There were appeals to racism in this campaign, and there is racial bias in this country, and there is sexism in this country, and anybody who thinks that 
that did not in any way impact on the outcome of this race is wrong. Democrats need to be mature and they need to be honest and they need to say, yes, there is there's misogyny. But it's not just misogyny from white men. Mm -hmm. It's misogyny from Hispanic men. Right. It's misogyny from black men, things we've all right. been talking about, who do not want a woman leading them. Yes, blame the American people. That'll get them to vote for you in the future. Others are blaming Biden. If only Biden stayed in the race and not let himself get politically stabbed in the back by his own party. I think of President Biden's decision to step down after the debate, something that if she does in fact lose, will be under a microscope. Yes, Harris performed so badly the people look back at Biden's debate performance and think that was our only shot. In many people's eyes, Harris should have obviously won because her campaign was flawless. And so what you've seen in the last couple of weeks, if this is an audition for managing a complex organization like the United States, Kamala Harris has passed the audition flawlessly. This has been, in many ways, a perfect campaign. The most liberal thing about that is their use of the word flawlessly. The main message seems to be that the Harris campaign did nothing wrong. It's all the fault of stupid, uneducated Americans, particularly the racist, sexist minorities. But just perhaps, that isn't why Trump won. One of the most important issues for voters was the economy. As much as mainstream media outlets kept saying the economy's healthy, People look at inflation under the Biden-Harris administration, which has made everything more expensive. The rich have gotten richer, and things have gotten tougher for the working class. As much as Democrats said they'd fix the nation and help the middle class this time, people weren't buying it, probably because they couldn't afford to buy anything. The border crisis was another major issue, and again, under the Biden-Harris administration, it got much worse. People wanted change. And as much as Harris tried to present herself as someone who would challenge the status quo, she was the status quo. She said so herself. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind. That was the wrong answer in an election where people wanted change. Even left-leaning Trump critics like Senk Uyghur see that people voted because they despise the democratic establishment and elitism, not based on race or gender. It turns out that when you're struggling financially, the last people you want to be lectured by are Hollywood millionaires. The only part they can't play is relatable, especially when a lot of them were fine with whatever P did he did. The American people across the board were fed up with how political elites have handled everything from the economy to the migrant crisis, crime, foreign policy, social issues like DEI and transgenderism, etc., and how they villainized people who disagree with them on those issues. It took the sole Republican on CNN to offer any sort of insight that wasn't an indictment of the American people who overwhelmingly voted Trump back into office. I'm interpreting the results tonight as the revenge of just a regular old working class American, the anonymous American who has been crushed, insulted, condescended to. They're not garbage. They're not Nazis. They're just regular people. I also feel like this election, as we sit here and pour over this tonight, is something of an indictment of the political information complex. And we were just ignoring the fundamentals. Inflation, people feeling like that they were barely able to tread water at best, that was the fundamentals of the election. The last thing the world needs right now is for people who voted for Harris lecturing people on social media why they're evil for supporting Trump. Look, elections are important, but that shouldn't be an excuse to act like a jerk. And that goes both ways. Trump supporters shouldn't use Trump's victory to dehumanize Harris supporters. At the end of the day, your neighbors are still your neighbors. Don't make the block party awkward. It's already awkward enough talking to the neighbor that never closes their blinds. Neither Trump nor Harris are going to be there for you to solve your day-to-day -day problems. Like it or not, you'll still be living side by side with people who have completely different views of the world. If you're really scared of America becoming a racist, misogynistic hellhole, then do what you can to be a good neighbor. A little kindness could make a huge difference. And remember, no matter who's president, America has been through worse and survived. And we'll survive this. And we can even thrive, especially 
if we elect Chris Christie president in 2028. And before YouTube kicks you to a random video, check out the latest episode of my show Deep Thoughts While Gaming, a special election episode about Hearts of Iron 4 and the rise of nationalism. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thank you for watching America Uncovered.